Hey everybody, I just wanted to talk about the electrical system a little bit. Uh, our home is designed to be both on-grid and off-grid and we'll start with the AC power. Uh, coming in where that foam is, that's the AC power coming in. Right now we are hooked up to the grid. It comes into that panel right there. Uh, when we're off-grid, that same uh, wire coming in will be hooked up to the generator and we'll turn the generator on if we need to if our batteries start getting too low and our solar or other um, regenerable energy sources are uh, not keeping up so that's um, that's the AC power uh, coming out there's several circuits they all run to plugins uh, so all we have is our, our AC plugins throughout the house there's one outside there's a couple in every room pretty much we don't have any of our lighting on AC uh, all of our lighting is DC um, and right now uh, we'll talk the DC system is being charged by a battery charger um, and the battery charger is, is running off of AC so over here is the battery charger it's a 30 amp battery charger uh, you can also see we have one battery right now now eventually we're probably gonna have four to five batteries but for, for now, since we're hooked up to the grid, one battery is fine. We can kind of test all of our systems, see how much power we use, and then decide you know, if we want four or five batteries. We might even be able to squeeze six into that space if, we're, if we really needed to, but I doubt we'll need that much power. Um, the battery that we have right now is a Deep Cycle AGM battery. Uh, I actually found it at Canadian Tire. They, we looked at some different brands, and you know, for the price and for the at least for the stated, um, uh, what do you call it? At least for the, the like the stated characteristics of the battery, this is probably one of the better ones. We probably did went a little overboard. This battery is about four hundred dollars, but it had some really good stats on it. Um, they claim that you can drain it eighty percent up to four hundred times. Uh, you can drain it, uh, draw it down fifty percent over nine hundred times, and uh, but anybody that knows about battery banks knows that you don't want to drain your battery banks down that far. Even 50% is a little bit too much. You'd probably be looking more at about 25 to 30% drawdown. So um, I'll just talk a little bit about amp hours and calculating power consumption. The um, This battery is 100 amp hours. And uh, so if we have four of them, we'd have 400 amp hours. And uh, But if we only want to draw down the system about 25 percent then really we have about 100 amp hours for regular use and 400 amp hours for emergency use so um, you can kind of keep track of uh, your battery's power right now you can see we're we're at 12.99 volts we're basically 100 percent charged right now um, so that this is actually a voltmeter I have on the wall here and uh, maybe talk more about that later in a separate video. Uh, I just found the voltmeter itself on Amazon, comes from China. Uh, I think it was like 10 bucks. It's not very expensive and actually the box that it's sitting in um, cost more than the voltmeter did. Um, but, uh, uh, and it was kind of hard to install because there's not a very big lip on that voltmeter. So I had to be very precise cutting out of that plate that it's in. That's just a regular wall plate. Uh, but all of our lighting is DC. Um, you have DC lighting going right now. It's not all in though. There's going to be a lot of uh, strip lighting, LED lighting along the, the ceiling in the lofts, under the kitchen uh, shelves, stuff like that. Uh, but just to talk about amp hours a little bit more, um, it's one of those things that doesn't make a lot of sense at first, uh, but one, once you kind of get a, a, a handle on it, it uh, it's actually pretty simple. So one amp hour would be using one amp of electricity for one hour. So if you have 100 amp hours and you're using 20 amps, then you've got to have basically five hours that you can run your devices or whatever. So you can kind of figure out how long your, your battery bank is gonna last by looking at your different appliances, uh, fans, lights, uh, whatever it is that you're gonna be running on DC power 
and multiplying that um, by how many hours you think they're going to run and you can kind of get a figure for it. Uh, to put things into perspective, I right now I have two overhead lights here. There's one here and one here. Each of them has two LED DC bulbs in them and um, basically all four of those bulbs together are just under one amp. So uh, theoretically off of this battery if I went from it's a 100 amp hour battery. If I went from fully charged to, to completely dead, um, which obviously you don't want to do, but theoretically I could run these overhead lights for 100 hours off of this uh, off of this battery. So that kind of gives you an idea of uh, how much power is in a battery. So you can see um, if I was getting uh, power from sun and wind and with a backup uh, generator for those days where you just don't have wind or you just don't have enough sun to keep up. Um, you can see how four or five batteries in a house of this size would, would probably be plenty. Um, we're not going to run, um, there's a few things where you just, there's like basically certain appliances which you just don't want to run on uh, DC power or on, on a, um, like a, what do you call it, like a renewable system or that are very difficult to have enough battery power. So things like this, this is a washer dryer right here. This thing uses um, 11 amps, but that's 110 AC. So you have to roughly multiply that by, to, so amps are basically um, watts divided by volts and then you get amps. Um, um, but anyways, uh, maybe I have to do like a better discussion um, on on converting AC to DC and how much power this would use. But basically, if your voltage is higher, then you're going to use more power for the same number of amps. So if you have 10 amps at 110 volts, then that's basically like a 100 amp draw um, at 12 volts or at 10 volts. Okay, so um, so this thing is 11 amps 110. So it's basically it would be like 100 or 110 amps at 12 volt. So really that battery could run the dryer on this thing for one hour. Um, so that, when, when we want to run this, we're just going to turn the generator on and we'll run the washer dryer and charge the batteries at the same time. And um, I think that that's a good use of a generator. You can kind of multi multitask. Um, you know, when people say that you can't be off the grid or you can't run on renewables, um, th there is some truth to that if you want to run all of your appliances. But uh, if you don't mind having a, a generator that you just turn on once in a while, I think it's completely feasible even for a larger house. You just have to manage your power consumption. Um, but just, we, and then everything was planned out to, um, to basically, um, be efficient. It's too bad it's a little dark over there. But our uh, our uh, main appliances that would burn a ton of electricity, our fridge, our stove, they run on propane. The fridge is actually propane or electric. Um, and then when you think about it, the only other things that use a lot of energy are things like a furnace. That that we have runs on DC, but it actually doesn't have draw that much. Our furnace is 3.1 amp uh, for the fan. Um, and then the rest of that is is a uh, propane heat so um, but th those would be the things um, you know we're, we're gonna have AC power in the walls for things like blender um, hair dryer stuff like that uh, but most of the time like when you actually think about it the times that you use the really high draw appliances are very infrequent so you really don't have to size your system um, to those appliances you just have to try to eliminate the the biggest offenders or have a strategy like we're gonna employ with the generator for, for the few times we need to, to draw quite a bit. So I'll stop it here today for the electrical system. I'm sure there'll be a lot more videos on them. I'll try to kind of break things down a little bit better than today, but this is just like uh, basically an, an overview. And um, oh, uh, actually just one more thing I missed here is over here is uh, our DC fuse block. So. Um, it just basically acts the same as a breaker box in, uh, for AC power. You can see uh, I have a few fuses in now, they're, they're not all in. All those black wires at the bottom, those are all uh, positive. Um, I know that's kind of opposite, uh, but uh, that's because we used uh, AC, um, what is that called? But anyways, the, the regular AC wiring. 
positive is, is actually black so that's what we went with um, but uh, I'll talk more about that later but that's you can kind of see I've kept it organized there's a little bit of extra wire on the sides there that's just in case I ever need to change anything I have I have extra wire to spare um, but yeah that's it for today and hopefully that kind of gave a brief overview of the system um, a few other things that weren't weren't in here is uh, you know if we do have solar power let's say next year or whatnot we would have uh, we'd also have a charge controller down there as well and uh, there's also going to be an inverter to the left of that battery charger there as well so uh, some of that stuff we just didn't need to, to uh, put it in before we moved in so it's stuff that we're going to work on while we live in here and uh, so there'll be more videos to follow about the electrical system all right take care